In my over 10 years of using Autodesk Revit for electrical engineering, I've realized that it is essential to learn all about families, and specifically electrical families, what they are, how they work. They truly are the foundation for modeling electrical systems. So in this video, I will present a comprehensive guide for beginners all about Revit electrical families. So let's get right into it. You can think of families as like Lego pieces, the little basic building blocks with a huge variety that can be placed into your electrical model or file to represent your electrical system. And according to Google Gemini, there's about 20,000 unique Lego pieces, and that's not even counting the different colors. Also, according to Gemini, a medium sized Revit model can similarly have thousands of different families. What are some examples of these electrical families? So one thing I strongly recommend you do when learning Revit is to just dive into an existing project, hopefully like an electrical project, and just start clicking things and analyzing things and see what's in this model. So what I have here is the Snowden Towers electrical model with the architectural model LinkedIn. This is a freely available project you can get off of the Autodesk site, and I have a link for that in the description below. You can get into this and see what makes this project tick. It is an almost complete project. This is a 3D view of the electrical system along with the architectural behind it, and you can even see some mechanical systems in there. So it has a lot of information that you can actually get in and, and click on. So for example, like I showed at the Lego model, this is just composed of a lot of individual pieces that are all connected together and data is attached to them. So for example, I click on a box here. Let me just click on this. It highlights and over here it says it's a PV panel board, 12 volt main circuit breaker surface. And so that's kind of telling you the name of that family. That is a family that has been inserted into this model. And this is all of the data that's included in it. Now there's a couple of different kinds of data. The data here in this property box that you can see right here is called instance data or instance parameters. It's information that is tied to just this one instance, this one Lego brick, not this other one over here, but just this one that tells you things about it. It tells you that it's on level R2, which happens to be the roof of this project. It is three foot five inches above the level of R2. And then a bunch of other stuff that as you get more advanced, you'll understand what all this is, but it shows that it has electrical loads in it. It was created as a new construction piece. It's not existing. And then down here, here's a bunch of electrical information about this. And since it's a panel board, it's going to have a rating in amps, number of circuits. What kind of distribution is this? This happens to be a 12 volt system in this model. I escape out of there and I can go down to any other electrical piece. Now you can do this in the floor plan view as well. Like this, if I go down to the double click on this one view here, it opens up a floor plan of the parking view level zero. Again, I can go in here. Now the architecture I can't get to because it's all one big piece. If I click on anything architecture wise, it's going to click on the architectural model, the link up here, a linked Revit model. But if I click on electrical things, like what's this? Let me click on that. That is a wiring pull box, as you can see here. And here are its instance parameters. Now the other types of parameters is called a type parameter. You get to that with this button here called edit type. Now it says we can edit these, but we don't have to. We can just look at them. Here is more data about this family. The family is called a wiring pull box. But these parameters, if I was to change any of these parameters, like the comment here, it would change them for every instance of this pull box because I'm changing its type parameters. That's how type parameters versus instance parameters work. But that is the basis of a family. You have a three-dimensional part of it that we saw in this 3D view. And sometimes you can, it will look different in a plan view. Zoom all in here. This looks familiar. It's a receptacle, right? So let's click on this receptacle. It highlights, click it. It is called a high voltage receptacle, standard. 
The parameters in this box are only related to this one receptacle. They are different than the receptacle next to it. We have panel and circuit number assigned to it. And in my other videos, I show you how to actually do that. But for now, we're just taking a look at what is inside this family. Let's see the type parameters. It has a default elevation, but we can put it anywhere we want. Here are the voltage and poles, load classification, and load for a standard high voltage receptacle. Now it's high voltage because it's 220 volt. In this case, it's not just a 120. And a lot of these are out of the box Revit families that you can use to design your projects. You can also get into a lot of custom families. So these things can be customized, their appearance. You can customize the data that's within them. You can even change whether it's a type parameter or a instance parameter. So all these things can be varied when you get more experienced. But this shows you that inside this electrical family is all this. Now, how does this stuff get into this family? Well, to see what goes on inside the family, we can jump into what's called the family editor. So up top, we can say edit family. Now, this is an advanced topic to actually edit a family, but it's good to explore and just see what's inside this receptacle. So let's go to edit family. It will open a whole nother view which is called the family editor. The ribbon will look different. Up top, you will see that we have extrusions and blends. This is the 3D pieces we can put in. We can put in some model lines or text. We can add connectors. Now, connectors are what makes MEP families special. We use electrical connectors and conduit connectors, cable tray connectors, our mechanical plumbing folks will use duct connectors and pipe connectors, but the connectors give our families the MEP smarts that we need. So this receptacle happens to be wall hosted, which means it will stick to a wall. It has to have a wall. And that's what this big greedy slab is, is representing a wall. And then if we zoom in, we'll see here's the receptacle. Now it gets kind of blobby here. So if I can go up to the thin lines button, we can thin it down. So that looks like a cover plate. Now there's no other graphics on the front of this. Again, this is just an out of the box receptacle. They did not get fancy with any graphics on the face. Of it. It's in the category called the electrical fixtures. Everything has a category, whether it be a lighting fixture, electrical fixture, electrical equipment, cable tray, things like that. And then this is an extrusion. So that's a 3D extrusion. Now this big green circle, and it looks like an ellipse now because of the way I'm looking at it, but click on this. That is actually a connector element. It's an electrical connector. This contains the electrical data or parameters, if you will, that we use to interconnect all of our electrical systems together to form a logical digital twin of a building. So for example, system type, is it balanced or unbalanced power? Balanced means that all phases, whether it's two or three, will share the load. And on a receptacle, that's typically what we want. Number of poles. This happens to have two poles. Power factor is set up for lagging. A classification that will come up under when we hook it up to a panel will be under power. And then we can get down to the voltage, 220. Apparent load, this is set up for 180. And the power factor, we, they've just left at 1. Now, some of these are gray. But what this means is that if I want to be able to get to this data in my model, which we just looked at earlier, Remember, I clicked on the receptacle and I could see the voltage and see the pulse. The reason I can see that is because that data is mapped or associated with a parameter in this entire family. So I have to bring the connector data, map it to family data to get to it. And then you just, you can get to that by clicking on this button up top, family types, the blue button. And here you can see the family parameters that I will be able to get to and adjust in my model. So that's why we could see the default elevation. We could see the switch voltage. We saw the number of poles and all these other things in the model because we said map them to family parameters. So that's what makes this tick. Now, furthermore, let me go, and there's another view. This is 3D. Let me look at the floor plan view. There, now you'll see all these dashed lines and these are like construction lines. They're called reference planes. That's an advanced topic to build or modify families, but I want to show you what's in here. As I zoom in, 
I'm looking at the face of my family. So I have a cover plate and then the actual device here. But you can see the symbol right here. Click on this guy. That's the symbol. And let's see how it looks without there, without thin lines. There's the symbol that I see in my plan view. So this family has both 3D geometry and two-dimensional symbol. And these show up differently depending on which view in my model I'm looking at and some of the settings I can do. So I don't want to th see the 3D geometry in a plan view. When I'm in this view, I don't want to see, I don't need to see a box in the wall recessed. I only want to see the symbol. But in my 3D view, I do want to see the 3D geometry, which is what we see here. Let me go back to thin lines. There, there's a box and there's its 3D geometry that I can actually see in this view. And I can use that for coordinating with other systems, for clash detection, things like that. Now let's check out a lighting ceiling plan. So we'll go over here to lighting block 43 and zoom all, ZA. And like we saw before, we had some lighting fixtures. Now we also have wiring. Click on wire, this is yet another family. A wire type, THWN, has all of the instance parameters in here. We can go to the type parameters. Now you can see when I click under this types, it's a family, wire types, but under the types, I have a THWN and an XHHW. So families can have subfamilies within them called types, so that you don't need a separate family for every kind of wire. Similarly, this light fixture, if I go edit type, you will see some different types in here as well. 100 watt, 120 volt, 277 volt, 120 volt, 277 volt, different wattages. So I don't have to have four different families. It's just one family with four types within it. And these types just mean they have different type parameters. For example, the difference between the 277 volt is right here. That's 277. If I go look at the 120, that type parameter here is 120. So anytime you change a type parameter, you can save it as a different type. And you can actually duplicate this and call it even something else. Let's say we have a 480 volt light. We can just do that. Change the ballast voltage to 480 volt. And then I would go two poles, and I can save that, apply that. Now I have made a fifth type. Here it is, 40 volt. So again, families can have subfamilies called types. If you click on a conduit, you can click on some of these are conduits right there. That's a conduit with fittings. Now that happens to be what's called a system family, and it has limitations on how much we can change it, and we can create different subtypes if we want. And there's rules for which types of families you can save as a separate file. It's an, actually a file you can keep on your hard drive and load that into other projects. You can do that with the what's called loadable families like the receptacle and the light fixture. But like conduits, you can't. So you know there's some nuances about the different kinds of families that you'll have to learn. But I just want you to understand the basics of what is inside these families and how they work. You can see all these families that are in this project by going down to the families heading in the project browser and annotation symbols. These are the families that are symbols like tags. And then if you go down to the electrical equipment, you can see that this model has transfer switch, circuit breaker switchboard, a generator, disconnect switches, transformers, panel boards, meter banks, even PV battery cabinets and inverters. These are all the electrical equipment category families that are in here. And then if you go to electrical fixtures, we get into things like receptacles, even hand dryers, motors, quad receptacles, and switches. So as you can see, there's just hundreds and hundreds of families that get put in here hundreds and hundreds of times to turn into a completed building.
And when you're ready to get into creating or editing these families, which I highly recommend you eventually get into, check out this video I have linked on the screen right now.